Hello everyone, welcome to the How to Moodle series of videos and today we're going to be navigating through your Moodle course. This video was designed for students on the USC eLearn platform here at the University of the Southern Caribbean. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so for the purpose of this demo, I will be the student Stan Lee. So I have just logged into my eLearn account and I'm now in my dashboard. So you should have a dashboard looking similar to this. So these are the different courses that I'm enrolled into. And if you scroll down, you can see uh, there are some deadlines here. So your quiz and your assignment deadline should come up here. Um, upcoming events, again, your quiz and assignments will come up here as well. And recently active forums you will have the forums that you are subscribed to here. Okay, and if you scroll to the top, you have, well, your name, uh, profile pic. These are some of the upcoming events here. You have your notifications as well as your messages. All right, so let's go into one of the courses here and see how it looks. Now, if you watch, my cursor right now is an arrow, and that means that wherever I click with this arrow, nothing will happen. So if I click on the different courses, if I click in these regions, nothing happens. But when the arrow becomes a hand, it means that that region has, is clickable. And when you click on it, it will take you somewhere else. So for instance, I want to go into this course, and you see the arrow becomes a hand, and it's on the name of the course. And if I click on it, I'll be directed now to the course itself. So let's see. Um, first of all, there is a general nomenclature that we use for naming these courses. You have the title, the course code, the initials of the teacher, the name of the teacher, which in this case is the Instruction Design and Development Unit. You have the date here, and that's the first day of the semester that you're in and then whether the course is online or blended. So just to make sure that you're in the right course, always look at the date. So for instance, in this example, we are in semester 3, 2018, 2019, and the first day for this semester is May 20th, 2019. So I know I'm, I am definitely in a semester three course. All right, so let's see. Some other features is that if I click this gear wheel here, I can then unenroll myself from this course that I'm in. Now you can only do this and this feature will only be accessible if you were self-enrolled in the course, meaning that you used an enrollment key to enroll yourself into the course. If you were manually enrolled into the course via your teacher or somebody else, then this feature will not be um, available to you. And then you'll have to contact us at elearninghelp101 at gmail.com so that we can unenroll you if you manually enroll, that is. If you're self-enrolled, then you have the option to unenroll yourself. This, um, at the, the, the home page, we call this the, the landing page. And you should see a, a graphic here and it will represent whatever school you're in. So for this example, I'm using School of Distance Education and the color for this school is orange. If, for instance, you are in the school of um, business, your color will be green. If you're in social sciences, it will be blue, science and tech, yellow, and so on. All right, as we scroll down now, you see the facilitators announcements forum. So this is the forum where, at least on a weekly basis, your teacher will be sending you announcements. Now, in this forum, you know, you get the announcements from the teacher, but you are not able to reply in this forum. So it's like a notice board where you can read all the announcements coming in from your teacher. All right. If you want to ask a question about the course, and it's a question that, that you know that is a general question, then you can use the question answer forum. And when you click on that forum there, then you can click add a new discussion topic and you can ask your question to the teacher here. Now remember, 
Um, the question and answer forum is a public forum, meaning that everyone that signed up for this course, uh, be the teacher as well as the other students, will be able to see whatever you are writing in this forum. So use this forum to ask general questions about the course. If you have a more uh, personal matter to discuss, then you should directly message the teacher and don't put it in this question and answer form simply because if it's confidential um, information, everyone will have access to it in this forum. So there's something to note about that. To go back to the course um, page, you could press the, the back arrow key here, backspace. Um, that's what a lot of people do. But you could actually use these breadcrumbs. All right, it's just like, remember from the Hansel and Gretel movie where they use breadcrumbs to get back at home? Well, you could actually use these things. These things are clickable and you can get back to wherever you will. So for instance, if I wanted to go to the dashboard from this page, I could just click on the dashboard. But for this, for right now, I want to go back to the course um, page, the, the landing page. So I'll just click on the course code for this course, which is IDDU001. So if I click here, it goes back to the start of the course. All right, so as you scroll down, okay, another thing that is very important, if you are having any technical difficulties using Moodle, then please email us at elearninghelp101 at gmail.com. So this is where we get all your, your, your technical, we give you technical support, all right? So please use this email if you're having any technical difficulties using Moodle. In this section, general course information, you're going to have access to your syllabus. Um, you get to know a lot more about your teacher. You have the Academic Honesty Declaration Forum to sign in and so on. In the grid system here, uh, for this example, we have four units. You will most likely have more units. It has the number for the unit, the title of the unit, and the time span for that unit. So for this unit one, it goes from May 20th to May 26th. And then you go into unit two, unit three, and unit four. All right, if I click on, on a unit now, I can have access to, you will see that they'll have a description for the unit, they will have objectives for the unit, and then you have these three sections here. Access and engage learning materials, become an active participant, contribute to community. And there are specific things that go into these categories here. So under access and engage, you'll have all your learning materials. So this is where you're going to get your notes, your PowerPoint slides, and so on. Become an active participant. In this area, you will see your activities, which will include your forums, your assignments, and your quizzes. So this is where you'll be doing something. And then the contributing community is where you will have uh, some kind of reflective activity or resource to cover. All right, so that's it for um, the general format of the units. On the left-hand panel now, you have the navigation and administration activities and search for library blocks. Now, if you're not seeing your left panel, it could be that it's hidden. So to, uh, to um, unhide it, you have to click the hamburger menu over here. So when I click this, in my case, I'm gonna now hide the left panel and if I want to bring the left panel back I just click on the hamburger menu once again now right now you can see there are plus signs by each block and that means that if I click on it it's going to open up and give me a lot more options so for instance if I click on the navigation block here I get these following options here now under my courses this course is IDDU001 so if I watch under IDDU001, I have these things here. So I have the participants, the badges, the grades, and also these are the different units. Now remember what I told you? It's made up of one, two, three, four. This course is made up of four units, and you can see the four units are here. So I could actually click here and go to the different courses, to the different units, sorry. So I have introductions, unit two is navigation, unit three is uploading resources, and so on. You could, you could, navigate your different units just by using this panel on this side. Another important thing is that if you click on participants, 
it shows you all the participants in that course. And let's say, for instance, you wanted to contact anyone in the course. You just need to click on their name. So, for instance, if let's say I wanted to contact Anthony Bordin and send him a message, I can just click on his name, his profile comes up, and then I can click on message, and I can I can type out a message right there and send it to him. So when I press send, Anthony Bordin is going to get the message. Another thing that you can do is that you might want to message your teacher directly. Now, how you can do that is that you can actually look through the list here to find your teacher's name, or you can go under current rule, and right now we have all participants in the course, but you could actually choose teacher, and then only the teacher comes up. And again, same thing, you click on, on the teacher, and then you can send a message directly to the teacher. If you want to access the grades for your course, for that course, then you just click on grades here and it will send you to the grade book. So these are the different quizzes and so on, and this is where we are at the moment. All right, now if you scroll down some more, you see there's the administration block, and I click the plus sign. And from the administration block, you can unenroll yourself from this course. Now, as I mentioned before, it's only if you self-enrolled into the course, meaning that you use, you found the course on Moodle and you use an enrollment key and you enrolled in the course, will you be able to unenroll? If someone else, like a teacher, manually enrolled you into the course, then you will not see this block. You will not be able to unenroll yourself and you will have to contact us at elearninghelp101 at gmail.com so that we can unenroll you. All right. The other block that I want you to see is the search for library. And if you click on this block here, it will direct you to the um, online library facilities where you can access um, the online databases for your research papers and so on. Okay. So the final block I want to show you on the left panel is the activities block. And this is a very important block, so please use it. Now, to, act, to access the activities block, make sure that you are on the course homepage. You should be seeing the landing page graphic there. Now, when you click on this activities block, now, it might be open or it might be closed. Let's look and see if you have the plus or the minus. So, in my case, it's closed right now. If I click on the plus, it will show me the different activities. So, you have assignments, you have your forums, and you have your quizzes. And what this block does is that it shows you all the activities in that course. So for instance, if I wanted to see all the assignments that have been prepared in that course, at least up to the time that you're checking, you can just click on assignments. And then you see all the assignments that have been prepared. Now your teacher might be preparing additional assignments along the semester. So you need to keep checking that left panel and see if there's any updates. All right. So in this case, we have two assignments. We can see, we can figure out what section they are from. So this one is from unit three. This one is from unit four. Um, these are the names of the assignments. These are the due dates. And um, where it tells you if you have submitted the assignment or not and the grades that you have gotten. So I see that I have an assignment that is due on the 26th of May. So I can go and click into this assignment here. Now, when I click on the assignment, you should see the teacher would have given you instructions for the assignment. All right, so you follow the instructions. Now, if you want submission status, no attempt, you're not graded because you have not submitted anything yet. Um, the software tells you when the, um, the due date is. And please know that this time is in Atlantic Standard Time. So depending on where you're living, please make sure that you are working with Atlantic Standard Time. So if, for instance, if you are living in Trinidad, well then this is, this is the time here we use Atlantic Standard Time. Now the time remaining to submit this course before the deadline is up is 23 hours. So you get, you get a lot of information just from this page. Now I follow the instructions and I know what I have to do. I have finished the assignment. I typed up the assignment on a Word document, then I can, add submission.
Now, depending on the settings that your teacher chooses for the assignment, you might see an online text box and a file submission box. It depends. Sometimes you'll see both. Sometimes you might see either one. Now, in the online text box, if you see there, it means that you could type up the, uh, your whole assignment within that text box and then submit. Or if you see a um, file submission um, box, it means that you have to do it up as a file, like in a Word document something, and then submit it there. So let's see, so like for instance, if you want it, you can type. In this case, we have the two options. You can type it out or you can attach a Word document. Now, I would, I would recommend that you, um, have your when you type up your assignment in a word document you have it ready on your desktop so just a drag and drop it makes life really easy so i'm just going to show you how easy it is i'm just going to take my assignment in this case i put the name of the student who i am at, in this scenario is stanley and it's a youtube assignment that i'm submitting so i take the word document and i just drag and drop it into the box so you see that my assignment has been submitted. I click save changes. And now if you watch the submission status have, has been updated to submitted for grading. All right, this is my assignment here. So I still have some time for before the deadline for the assignment comes up. So if I wanted, I could click this button, edit submission, just in case, oh, you know what? I thought that there was some additional stuff I wanted to do. And then you can, Click on your document, you can delete it. And then you can drag and drop the new updated document. You click Save Changes. And now the new document is in there for the teacher to mark. So those are some options there. Now, let's go back to the home page where we're using the breadcrumbs. And let's go to the activities block. And let's look at assignments now. Now we just submitted um, this assignment. So you see, this has been updated to submitted for grading. So that's how you know that you definitely submitted something for grading. That's your proof right there. All right, so again, I'm gonna go back to the course homepage. So I'm gonna click the course code using the breadcrumbs. And I'm going to go down to activities. And in this time, I'm going to be looking at quizzes. So I'm gonna click on quizzes. Now, when you click on quizzes, you see all the quizzes for the course so far from the, uh, the point in time that you clicked on quizzes. Now, in this example, in this demo, I have already done one of the quizzes and I've been pretty good at it. I got 10 out of 10. All right, so you get all the information here. It tells me it's in year three. It tells me the name of the quiz, the time the quiz closed and the grade I got. Now let's do the other quiz. So the other quiz is due the 29th of May. Today is the um, 26th. So let me click. Now remember, once there is no hand, it means it, it can't be clicked. So if you watch, there's no hand here. So if I click, I can't get to the quiz. If I click here, I can't get the quiz. But the hand icon comes up so I can click and I'm into the quiz. So um, there's some very important information here. I have one attempt at this quiz. Uh, the quiz opened on the 25th of May. It's going to close on the 29th of May, 9, 18 p.m. It means that, that from the 29th of May, 9, 19 p.m. onwards, I will not be able to, to do this quiz. So let's start the quiz now, attempt quiz now. Um, the quiz has a time limit of five minutes, all right? Now the thing is, is that unfortunately, Ideally, we should have a timer coming up when you do the quiz, but right now with this version of Moodle, we are having difficulty showing the timer. We are working on it. So you should have your, your watch or clock nearby to, to, to make sure that you, you can see the timer and be aware of it. All right, so once you're ready to start the quiz, you say start attempt, and this is the quiz. So it's a very simple quiz. Um, so one plus one, some multiple choice. What is your favorite color? It's a short answer question. I'll just put that. And then once you're finished, you say finish attempt. All right. Now, it still says I have four minutes to the seven seconds. All right. 
and and so it means that I could actually go back into the quiz and if I want I can change my answer and then click finish attempt again and you could keep doing that until the time is up but if you are satisfied with the answers of the quiz then you can just say submit all and finish and then you confirm by clicking the button again all right so you see your final grade for this quiz all right now you might say well i want to know what were the answers for the quiz and normally you will be able to do that by clicking on the review but in terms of the settings for the quiz once the quiz is active meaning that the due date for the quiz the quiz hasn't been closed then you won't be able to review the quiz so it's only after the quiz closes then you'll be able to review the quiz so for instance let's go back remember i did a quiz previously and it's past the due date so let's go back to quizzes all right let's go to the first one here if i go to this quiz you see because the deadline has passed that was way in february we are now in may i can actually review the quiz and see what i got wrong so you see i got these cards so if you watch from the navigation here i got question one correct but i got both question two and three wrong in this try so i could go and see that um i had one plus one equal two i said it was false but the correct answer is true and I had eight times eight to be 34, but they said that answer is incorrect. The correct answer is 64. So you can learn from your quizzes, learn from the mistakes you made and so on by just going over and reviewing the quiz. It's a great revision um, strategy and so on. And you learn a lot from this. All right, so you can just click finish review and then we go back to the course. So we have done quizzes, we have done assignments, let's look at forums so you will have different forums all right you will have your general forums which will be like your facilitator announcements your question and answer forum and then you have your learning forums now in your learning forum you see the description there um like in this one this is just a demo purpose so you see for the copyright discussion forum that i've set up you have the instructions here and you know just some general gibberish there but um Let's pretend that they are real instructions. And then the teacher should also say, please post responses by, and I give you a date and time. All right? So it means that I know that I have to um, post responses for forums before this date and time. Now, unfortunately, um, forums are a little different from assignments and quizzes and how they are treated in Moodle. Like for instance, with assignments and quizzes, we could actually tell Moodle, um, give Moodle a start time and an end time. And Moodle then puts it on your calendar. It gives you notifications and so on. But for forums, um, it's a little different. For forums, uh, you actually need to uh, go into the forums, like how I did in the activities block, and keep checking to see if there's a forum. So what I would, recommend you do is that at least once a week you go in the activities block and see if there are any new forums that the teacher has posted but at least you will should know what when is the deadline for the form the teacher should give you that in the description another thing that you can do is that if you look at all these forums here you see that there is a subscribe section a subscribe color all right now if you want you could actually subscribe to all the forums. If I click subscribe to all forums, all right, you see I get a confirmation here that you have been subscribed. It means that, that um, once a participant, whether it be the teacher or the user in the course, once they post something up in any of the forums now, you will be notified via your messaging system on Moodle, plus uh, a message will be sent to your personal email account that is linked with this Moodle account. Now be warned about the personal email account. Sometimes the personal email account will see this as spam and will go into your spam folder. So please, you know, check your spam folder every now and then. All right, now because I've subscribed to all the forums, you see on this subscribe column now, you are subscribed to all. So you see they said subscribe, yes, 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 and yes. 
Now, I would, I would, I would caution you about subscribing to all these forums. It means that you're going to be getting a lot of messages in your inbox, so be wary of that. All right. Now, if I wanted to unsubscribe from all the forums, I just click the unsubscribe button from all forums, and you will get a confirmation that you are now not subscribed. All right. And if you watch under the subscribe column, you should see no, 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 and so on for all the for all the forums. Now, something that may have caught your eye if you're paying attention is that you will see that when I, I click subscribe to all forums or I click on unsubscribe from all forums, this box for facilitators announcement for it always says yes. And the reason for that is like unlike all the other forums where you have a choice to subscribe or not subscribe, we have what is called a forced subscription for the facilitators announcements, meaning that you are always subscribed to this one. All right. So I've shown you options to subscribe to all forums and subscribe from all forums. Now, another thing you can do is that you can pick and choose which forums you want to subscribe to and even change that status along the way. So for instance, a good one to subscribe to is the question and answer forum. And if you want to subscribe to it, you just click the box that says no and it now turns to yes. So now you are subscribed and it means that you are going to be notified about whatever is happening in this forum. Now, if at some point in the semester you don't want to be notified anymore, you can click the yes box and now it becomes a no. All right, and you can do that with any of these forums. So you can click a no into a yes or a yes into a no all throughout the semester. The only one that you have no option of changing is the facilities announcement forum. Okay, so let's, let's just Let's use one of these forums. So for instance, let's look at the introductions here. So let's click on this forum here. All right. So you see that one of these students have already um, posted on this forum. You go through the instructions that the teacher would have given you and make and it give you a word limit, um, at least 300 words long and so on. And when you're ready to post on the forum, you just click add a new discussion topic. Um, subject, well, in this case, it will be introductions. And then you can put a message here. In this case, I'm just going to put, hello, everyone. Nice to meet you all. So this is just a demo, so I'm not going to go into any more details than that. And then when you're happy with it, you just click post to forum. And it goes to the forum. You have 30 minutes to edit your response and so on. And then what you can do is that you could use actually use these little boxes here and subscribe or unsubscribe to individual posts. So there's another option you have here. All right, people. So again, I will tell you I'll go to your activities block and at least on a weekly, I will recommend at least twice a week, go and click on assignments, click on forums, click on quizzes, and make sure that you're up to date with each of these activities. Don't just rely on the notifications or messages from your teachers. It's also going to be coming up here. And I will show you, like for instance, in this example, all the assignments for the course that have been prepared so far. So you make sure that you keep up to date with your work. Thank you very much for listening. I really hope that this video helps you. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns or recommendations, you can contact us at elearninghelp101 at gmail.com. Take care, everyone, and I wish you all a very successful and productive semester. Bye.